Hello, it's James from X-Robots. This is part 51 of my Age of Ultron inspired Hulkbuster suit and I've got the legs just here. I've done a couple of testing videos on the legs recently and the last part was actually wearing the whole suit with the arms on and everything. And it wasn't too bad, I can walk in it okay, but I had a few issues with the legs wobbling which I'm going to resolve in this episode. Also the legs don't have any backs on them, so that's something that I'm going to get back onto in this episode as well. And I previously built some sort of mechanism to make those backs of the legs open which we're going to revisit and hopefully build some more on. But first of all let's just have a quick check around the back of the legs and look at those ankle locks and mechanisms and see why there was so much wobble in the last testing video. So here we are down by the ankles of the suit and I've got these ankle locks which unlock and that then allows the ankle to pivot around on the other side. So on this side there's another ankle lock and there's also a massive bolt that holds the ankle to the foot. So with both ankle locks undone that means I can move the legs all around um, and I found that in the last video of course that made them really wobbly because there's nothing really holding them apart from a few bungees at the top and this one at the bottom. Now in the previous testing video to that where I tested without the arms they were really good, but what actually happened as it turned out is that the inside ankle lock was still done up on them and the only the other side was undone. That's why I put these bungees on so I can still be flexible on the inside, uh, but I've got something tying this in and that was supposed to stop the movement sideways. Um, however, bungees are quite springy, so it didn't. So what I really want to do is uh, put a rigid link on this side. So I've already got the rigid link on this side, which is this bolt. So that holds that side. Um, but I still need something to hold this to stop it moving backwards and forwards. But I still want to be able to move sideways and back and forth this way, of course, to walk. But I don't want this twist. So I'm going to put in another linkage on the inside here, which is going to uh, be more like a rigid bar, but it still needs to allow for the other flexibility. So I think what I'm going to do is um, get a kind of universal joint kind of hinge thing so it hinges from this point all the way to this point and it's going to be a rigid bar but it'll still be flexible at both ends which will allow this leg to move if I just do this lock like this and it'll still allow it to tip front and back but it'll stop it from rotating. So hopefully this is clearer once I start building it what's going on but basically I need to make some ends for a piece of studding that will be strong enough so we've done a drawing here in Autodesk 123D Design and I started on the far side here with two primitives that just came off the primitives menu and I did a sketch on one face and extruded that through to make a hole. I've then merged those and pulled some of those faces in and out a bit which is really easy to do to scale them and then cut a hole in another sketch on the face and that's where a nut is going to go and extruded through a hole in this face for a piece of studding so that gives me a kind of joint for the end there and I've just used the tools here to chamfer off the corner and again I've just scaled the size of the circle there so it made a thing that was roughly the right size so I need to print four of those two for the ends of each rod and two pairs for each leg Here they are, so I've got four of them, pretty much what I designed, come out really well. And the aim is to obviously stick a piece of studding in, like so, and put a nut on each side of this piece, and then we can mount a bolt or whatever through there. And of course we put one on each end here, so we can make a kind of rod that can then be attached, and that will anchor so it will bend on the pivot points, but it won't allow the thing to be pushed that way. So I've attached that to the rod at one end and you can see I've got lock nuts in there and I've also got um, big washers on each side. So that one is going to mount right on this piece of wood so I can put a screw through and screw that on. And the other one I want to mount down here. So what I'll do ideally is take the other end when I've got the length correct and stick a bolt through with a nut on the end and that can rotate as well. Uh, the problem I've got is of course that it has to fit on here. And this is just a 6mm piece of plywood. If I bolt through, then I'm going to have some issues because the other lock is on the other side and it needs to move past this. So what I'll have to do is use this countersink bolt, but obviously the countersink is going to cut away most of the wood there. So I'm going to stick another bit of plywood or two on the inside. So this has got something to attach to with a nut on the inside. And then I can put the other thing on 
and that should be nice and strong. It doesn't actually need to be that strong given that this is just plastic. Possibly using metal is a bit overkill but um, it's something I don't want to break. just using the screws that hold on this lock to just hold that in place so that should fit pretty well there if I just screw through then obviously we'll bolt through the top as well so that should hold this super secure So that bolt is in, and obviously this fits on to one end, and this then needs to go on the other end. So I'm going to put a bolt in through this piece of wood to the outside to rest that on, and then we should be there. Right, so it's now installed on two bolts. I can still get my boot in, so that's good. And if I undo the ankle locks, you should now find that I can still move my foot backwards and forwards this way. And I can still rock it this way, but obviously this constrains rotating about this point. So that should stop it rotating as much this way, which should stop the legs wobbling. So I've taken the bungee off now, and we need to ultimately give that a test. All right, I'm in and I'm just gonna do a quick test and walk around and test flexibility. So obviously I can rotate my legs this way and I can bend my knees. So this is all good. And I'm pretty sure I can walk. I don't get the toes caught. Yep, seems all right. I can definitely see those legs are uh, staying where they should and I can't twist them very much. There's a little bit of play but not very much due to those new rods. So that seems pretty good. Right, the next part of this is to put the back doors on. So um, I previously made this mechanism that I'm going to refit, which uh, had a kind of opening thing. And uh, also, um, as well as opening the back door, it also dropped them down. So they're kind of on these two-way pivot things with these orange Ninja Flex parts, which make universal joints. And uh, kind of did this kind of thing. So I'm gonna mount these back on the back of the legs. Hopefully they still fit with all the other modifications and then we can build the back of the leg frames. So these fitted on the inside fortunately, so there's still quite a lot of clearance and you can just about see the four screw holes where that was mounted. I think the screws came from the other side, so it must have been that way round. And there's a screw hole for this to mount on the outside, which is still clear. So hopefully I can move this bit of wood, which is just to brace the uh, screw from that lock. It's a bit of foam there glued over a screw so I don't snag myself, but I think, I should be able to put that right back in there. Okay, these are fitted right back on, which is excellent. And just to demonstrate that mechanism, they, this will be where obviously the back door is mounted. And as I open it, it opens like this and it also drops backwards. So that's quite good. And the plan is to obviously build the back of the legs onto here and it should hinge back into this cavity on here, like so. And the other one works exactly the same. Just check that out from another angle. And the aim was that it would be cable controlled off here, but I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do that or not. 
at the moment. I do have one small issue which is that they can turn inside out where this gets jammed and it goes the wrong way. It should go that way but this is a problem so I need to put a little end stop on here just to stop that moving the wrong way so it always goes outwards. just made these little blocks here which I'm going to solvent weld in with acetone and that will stop that thing turning the wrong way so it always has to push outwards and I've also got a little hole in it you'll notice so in the future I can put a pulley in there to pull against this so that I can pull it shut or latch it shut or spring it shut or whatever I choose to do. It'd be quite good if there's a string that I pull that pulls this shut and holds it and then I can just push it open when I want to get out the same as the backs. So that looks like it works pretty well. Um, the other concern of course is this ankle lock which does still undo and it hits the bottom of this but it doesn't really have to go any further and that also means I can use the bottom of this bracket to put some sort of latch to hold this up. Um, of course now if I undo the other one the leg can still move backwards and forwards and it can still move sideways uh, but it doesn't twist so this will never hit this and that's because of the new bar that I put in earlier in this episode so that should all be fine basically. So I think that's looking pretty good. So obviously I can build the back of the legs on these hingy parts that I've got here and I was going to do that this episode and try building the frames out but actually I've realised I don't really know where they need to start and end. So the bottom is fairly clear because there's some kind of bits we can see in reference pictures on the heels of Hulkbuster that need building probably out of foam and so on the same as the toes but uh, the top of this leg really needs to be sorted out so that I know when the leg bends, and if we just unmatch one of these now, obviously this bends here, so we need to see that this doesn't hit this. And also this doesn't interfere with the back panels on the suit, which I've already built. So I've just been to measure the back, which is still downstairs from the testing, and I think that I've got 30 centimeters from this bungee, and then the back panels come slightly further out than that. Um, so obviously if this hinge is back I need to make sure this doesn't hit the top of this and that this is the right size. So what I really need to do is build the back of the thighs. And I think that's going to be quite a simple hinge door. That's the next thing I'm going to do and then I think I've got about 20 centimeters of panel before there needs to be a gap to allow the heat, the knee to hinge. Now I do have a plan for filling the gaps in which I'll be doing in a later episode. So for now I'm just going to build a little back door that goes on here then we can start thinking about the frames for all of it. So my plan for that mechanism is to build a piece which is blue here which screws onto the leg there and obviously it sticks out. So the very end of it around uh, here is about 30 centimetres, the pivot point from that bungee that I mentioned and obviously we've got a back door which is going to hinge on it uh, like so and the back of Hulkbuster's thighs are quite square although there's obviously quite a bit to be built on that and I've made sure that I've set back the blue part so it doesn't rub on any panels that I glue on which is likely to be made of expanded polystyrene and foam. Um, so uh, what I really want though is a mechanism where this will spring shut by itself and stay there and will also spring open and stay there so it's not swinging around when I try and get in and out of the suit and it's really easy for me to probably reach down because it's right at the top of the legs and open and close or for my helper to do. So the plan is, and I can demonstrate this uh, hinge by using the smart rotate feature. So I've got um, a thing here which is clear and I can use smart rotate on the transform menu to rotate around a face. So now I can say I want to, trans uh, to rotate around that face. I want to rotate this part. So now I can see how that's going to rotate, which is quite good. So obviously when it's shut it's there and when it's open it's here somewhere. So what I've done you'll see is put this piece on top with two holes for some cable ties and the plan is to attach my favourite thing a bungee cord to somewhere further down the blue part. 
So uh, basically there'll be an end stop, so it's sprung shut in this position, so that uh, bungee goes across the angle, but when it's open, because of the offset hinge, the bungee's now on the other side, so it springs it shut, because obviously it will be sprung across the shortest point. So um, that should work pretty well. So I'm going to print these parts out. You'll notice I haven't put the anchor point on the blue part. I'm going to make an additional part, which is solvent welded on, to anchor the other end of the bungee so I can tune the position, and then I can slide that up and down and fix it in place. So let's get those printed and see how well that hinge works. Here they are, I remembered to make opposite parts, so that's pretty good. So we'll get these screwed on and then mount the hinges on. So I've screwed this part on here, and this is the part that holds the back door. So I've just got a bit of studding there with a nut on, and that should go right through the hole. If I can find it, there we go. All the way into the bottom, and obviously it won't fall upwards, so that should stay in there. But if I want to take the back door off, I can. So. That's going to form the basis for the back door. Now we need to deal with that spring part. Right, here it is from the top angle. So that's the door opening there. So what I want to do is spring it shut. So I'll attach a bungee, and I've got a bit of test bungee here, onto this point and spring it across here so it pulls it shut. Um, so obviously when it's the other way though, if it doesn't get caught on that nut head, then it springs it this way. So. What we need to do is make an anchor here that's high enough the bungee goes over the nut and it's tight enough so when it comes this way it's then pulled there and we also need an end stop to stop this just shutting so we need a little bracket that holds this point here to stop that shutting there and when it's open I don't really care so I need to print those bits and a little thing that comes up here to some height to hide the bun to hold the bungee Obviously this is all hidden behind the panel that's going to be on here and this seems a bit flimsy at the moment but obviously I'm going to build up the back of this in some rather rigid materials the same as I did with the toes and to push it open and closed I think I can reach it because I have to reach these things to unlock the knee which are just behind me so that's in just the right position where I can just reach behind and push it. Right having given that five seconds further thought I've decided there's an even simpler solution than that which is to put it on the back here. So if I attach one end of the bungee to here and just pull the other end to the outside, obviously that pulls it shut there. But again, because of that offset hinge, when this is open, it puts the bungee on this side of the hinge. So it pulls it back and, and leaves it open. So, whoops, all I actually need is an anchor point just here to wrap this bungee into. See if I can hold that down sensibly. So this pulls it this way and holds it open and this way it pulls it shut the other way which is really simple also it won't interfere with the torso which sits on here and sticks out a little bit although it does stop here so that's it so I just need to print an anchor point here I can use one of the screws here to attach the bungee and an end stop Right, some small bits of plastic. So I've got two here, which are obviously the anchors for the bungee that will be solvent welded on wherever, and two right angle corner pieces, and they've got a cut out to be solvent welded to the frame, and they cut that corner out there where they go around the hinge. So let's see where they fit. All right, so my little anchor thing I've decided goes just under this hinge, so it's gonna overlap the corner and fit on there so my bungee can pull on the inside. And then the end stop is this piece, and that's going to fit to the frame here, so that it's there to stop that piece, so it's just fitted on this frame with the cutout. And I can position that so this stops at a right angle, which is roughly where the back of the legs need to be. So I'll get those attached, and we'll see if that works. Right, I've tied the piece of elastic in, I've just tied it to the inside of the leg to a screw that's already there. And uh, now this seems to work okay, so it springs open and 
spring shut like that. So I can obviously tension the bungee up to make it better so it doesn't wobble when I walk. But I won't know how to until I've built the back of it. But that idea seems to work pretty well. I'd like to implement a similar system with these so they don't fall open by themselves. Obviously I was going to have a pulley to pull them up which can still be done and then push them open but what's going to hold them in place? So I don't want them sprung either way so I really need a system the same as the top back doors. So what about if I sprung this point perhaps over here? So this is pulled and that holds it shut but when I push them open then it's sprung the other way so it holds it open, so that's something I could do. I'm going to have to test when I've got the backs on to check what sort of weight and things we're dealing with, but I think that could be a good system where they sort of pop open and they pop shut again and they're held in either position. All right, that's the end of this episode. There's no big testing segment with the whole suit this time. I'm going to do that once I've built the back of the legs out and that's hopefully going to happen mostly next time. So I'm pretty confident with these frames and things I've built this time that I can go and build on the back with really lightweight materials though. So I might even consider just painting the foam instead of sticking these rigid panels on because all the weight adds up and the legs are pretty heavy already. I don't really want any more weight on them. I just really need a, a lightweight shell. And it's the back of the suit so no one's really going to look around there that much. Alright, so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more on this project and there's quite a bit more to go and other projects including my life-size Ultron project and my BB-8 builds. That's all for now.